So if you've been watching The Usual Suspects, your Yankee, your Silver Dragons, your uh, Silver Seeker, you may have seen that uh, with prices of silver moving around so wildly, I mean, obviously it's it's been a good run for silver to the upside, but on the buying side, in other words, in order to take advantage of that you know, price action, obviously you gotta sell, who are you selling it to? Typically you're selling it to the coin shop or something along those lines and it seems like a lot of them you know really aren't uh ready to dole out you know big big money for for silver it's interesting though because uh i did watch a video i think it was t uh the silver stacker which you can see some of his poured silver here uh, i did buy some of his poured uh, silver uh, from one of his auctions pretty nice pieces uh this guy pretty big silver button pretty nice Again, pretty good stuff. He's also got uh, some bars that he poured. Pretty good, pretty cool. But uh, anyway, um, and I think his channel, the coin shop uh, owner was saying that uh, they hadn't really seen too much of uh, on the buying side or uh, on the selling side, um, which is also interesting because I think it's pretty funny that, um, you know, you see that during the price run-ups, people try to catch you know catch the, the the run and they end up buying you know somewhere near the peak now of course we don't know you know what silver price is going to do from one minute to the next but just seeing you know how people respond how they act when prices are going up like that obviously people run to buy uh and then we see like a day like today where you know it falls what 70 percent in a day it's pretty i mean those are pretty big moves and it, what's interesting to me is like typically when you look at you know silver price or gold I mean, a lot of people, I would say, probably look to metals for some type of stability other than just, you know, the uh, outside the system asset out aspect of it. But when you're seeing price action like that, I mean, I think the thing that kind of makes silver and gold kind of different is it's kind of like uh, more in the realm of something like your real estate. You know, I always laugh, you know, when people talk about like real estate versus like stocks or things like that. The reality is like when people think about risk and they get, you know, very focused on, you know, how much risk they're taking, they only associate risk with things that they can look at and see the value, you know, fluctuate. For example, like stocks or things, crypto or things like that, you know, and they, they feel like because they can see the change in value on a regular basis, that somehow, you know, that's more risky. But, you know, if your house had a, you know, a running total on it of what the value was, maybe not recently because obviously prices have gone up, you know, the last 10 years pretty much in lockstep um, upward. I mean, but before that, <clears throat> you know, price in real estate, you know, did fluctuate. And if you had to see that kind of thing on a regular basis, obviously, you know, you may not be as comfortable with it as, as you are, you know, not having idea really how much your house is worth. But these kind of things, I think when you see silver and gold move, you know, so rapidly in one direction or the other, uh, I mean, from a selling standpoint, ideally, at some point, you would want to take some gains, which we know that in the stocking community, you know, most or many stackers don't do that. They just kind of ride the tide up and down, which, I mean, I guess there could be value in that strategy. But to me, I always look at it as at the end of the day, even if you're doing it for preservation, if you can have more in your hand, why wouldn't you do that? So to see these videos from like uh, the coin shop owners uh, or, you know, the, you know, I think it was Silver Seeker that was talking about, you know, that someone was offering him $18 a round uh, for like silver buffalo rounds or generics. Uh, which is obviously with the price right now, that's insane. Like, why would anyone sell to you? But I'm sure there would still would be people that would walk in there and sell stuff. Why? Because again, um, and I'm not sure if it was the same video, but they were talking about, you know, how uh, the people that they are seeing that are selling are like, you know, the normal suspects. Like, you know, hey, I, you know, so-and-so passed away. I'm selling their, their stuff. You know, what can you give me for it? versus like a stacker who's more familiar but something else interesting that uh that i caught or picked up on on that video was that you know what they were talking about is that and i think this was actually t's video that was talking about this uh the coin shop dealer was saying that the people who ask about price and 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 ask for thoughts on you know what which direction silver or gold are going 
that that's kind of for the coin shop dealer that's kind of like a tip off like this is a noob and like you know this person probably you know isn't gonna stick around for the long run because potentially um because they're looking for you know a certain type of price action from you know the metals and and they want to make a profit and i think that's kind of the lesson here in this rising you know rising spot price environment it's very difficult to predict again and i mean there really is kind of no rhyme or reason sometimes with gold and silver as far as the price action just when you think it should you know oh it should go up and it goes down and you know when there's no really no reason all of a sudden it shines it you know shoots upward this environment where you're seeing close to a 10 percent move to the downside or upside i mean that's a big swing think about that you know, I think the thing is with gold and silver, we kind of make an excuse for it that, oh, well, it's a physical asset. So what do I care? I'm going to buy and hold. So what do I care? No, you still have to care, right? I mean, if something falls 20% in value, that is a big substantial move. And especially if you have a larger stack, you know, you're 100, 200, 300, 500 ounces, you know, to lose 10% of value, you know, overnight, even if, you know, you're still up it's it's a consideration and if you're not looking at it like that you i mean you should be right i mean anything else it's not rational anything else you would look at it and say oh my god what happened if it was your stocks that kind of thing you'd be like what the hell you know i just lost 10 percent." but because it's it's you know metals you look at it well it's okay I'm, I'm okay with that you shouldn't be okay with that you should not be okay with that the thing is that again even if it's a long-term investment so to speak the fact that, you know, you where your stack fits in your big picture, you know, it's not necessarily the same place as like your stock portfolio, which again, I mean, if it's retirement assets, that kind of thing, it's going to last your whole life. Your stack potentially, again, the idea is you want to have more, you know, like it's not just about buy and hold to a to a fault. For some it is because I think at that point, honestly, it, it's become more of a hobby of of somehow hiding value in, in metals. But for the vast majority, I mean, you should be much more proactive about, you know, your wealth. Again, the idea is to accumulate more. The hard part is, like anything, like I said, like you can't time the market, so to speak. But just like you, you know, you purchased in at, you know, 17, 16, 15, 14, pre-pandemic, and now, you know, it's at 30. I mean, that's a pretty substantial gain, right? At a certain point, you might want to lock in those gains and, you know, reallocate to other things. But that's very difficult in the stacking community because what do you reallocate that money to? What, where do you reallocate that value? Well, I mean, a lot of them would say, well, I'm not going to because everything else is fake. I don't trust the bank. I don't trust the, you know, the market. I don't trust this. I don't trust that. That's a tough place to be because basically you've hitched your ride only to metals, which the funny part is, again, with metals so many of the people that buy metals think the whole system is rigged so you're hitching your wagon to something that you knowingly think is like a rigged market but you trust that more than the other ones it's, it's kind of a crazy concept but you see that a lot in the stocking community what i would say is that again you want to treat this like anything else i mean the idea is to get ahead at some point not that you need to be an investment or a trader of your metals but I mean, you still have to look at it in a rational, logical fashion, not just something where it's like, I'm going to buy and hold to oblivion. I mean, again, metals can fall just as easily as they've gone up, you know, post pandemic. We don't know. But the thing is that, you know, being stuck in something that could potentially, you know, plummet 50% in value. And that would be totally normal going back to pre pandemic, you know, prices. Many stackers would say, no, it's never going to go back. You don't know that. I don't know that. But it could definitely happen. It's absolutely within the realm of possibility. Now, those of you who still have money coming in would say, great, put, bring it down, cut it down by 60%. I'll just buy more. Excellent. That, that is the right attitude. But if you don't have the other side of the equation, being able to part with some silver when prices are high, is there really benefit there? You tell me.